Hello and happy weekend. I picked up this cookbook that was just published in this last month and I am really excited about it and I kind of wanted to flip through it and give you kind of my first impressions of it. It's This is not a review. I have not read anything of this book. I know a little bit about the author, but I haven't like cooked out of any of the recipes or anything like that. So that video will come later if I like this cookbook. <laughs> but I basically just wanted to go through it. It's simply Julia by Julia Tertian. And I wanted to flip through it and talk to you about it. So let's do that. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing that I notice about this cookbook is I have extreme kitchen envy. I look at this beautiful kitchen, my God. So Julia Tertian, I know that she is a, like a professional home cook. She isn't a chef, she didn't go to school, she hasn't worked in restaurants, but she has published a few other cookbooks that are all about being a home cook. So that really appeals to me. That's very much the category that I fall into as well. So I'm really excited to look through it. In the beginning, we've got just like a little, a little blurb about Julia. Oh, and then the kitchen. My God. That is a stunning kitchen. This font is really interesting. It looks handwritten. I think it is handwritten. There's too many discrepancies. So that's cool. I bet it's her handwriting. Hmm. That's an interesting little personal, you know, touch. So I guess all of these contents, probably all of the recipe, are, is the whole recipe handwritten? No. But the, the recipe titles are handwritten. So that's really nice. That's a very nice little personal, intimate touch. I find that handwriting is one of those things that can say a lot about a person and I think that there's a lot of style that can go into handwriting so I really like that. Oh I should mention it's 110 easy recipes for healthy comfort food. Healthy comfort food that's such an interesting subtitle. It's kind of um com not combative but like healthy and comfort food are like typically in really separate categories. You've got your healthy food, which is like, you know, supposed to be more nutritious and like low carb, low sugar. But then we've got comfort food, which is usually really carb heavy, really sugar forward. That That's very interesting to me. I'm wondering how she is finding the balance between healthy and comfort and where she is cutting things out or making certain swaps to make them healthier, but still sticking to comfort classics. Very interesting. Okay, so, We've got the introduction and then five lists, 11 weeknight go-tos, 11 make-ahead mains, 11 vegan one-pot meals for everyone, 11 chicken recipes, 11 great soups and stews, 11 go-to sides, 11 salad dressings, easy sauces and relishes, 11 favorite breakfasts, 10 noshes and a drink, 11 memorable sweets. And then she finishes it with seven lists, menu suggestions, lists of vegetarian, vegan, dairy-free, egg-free, gluten-free recipes, and acknowledgements. Okay, and a beautiful picture of a cabbage. In her introduction, the first sentence is, I loved making this book. How lovely. I'm not gonna read this, it would be pretty boring for me to read this on camera, but I am going to, you know, read it in my own time. I really think that reading introductions to cookbooks is very important. You get to know about the cookbook, you get to know about the author, you get a little backstory and maybe some hints and tips and tricks, so. Oh good, so she goes into healthy and like what that means and what that means to her and what she has done to make these comfort recipes healthy. Healthy food isn't just about what I eat, it's also about connecting myself more closely with where my food comes from and honoring, compensating, and protecting the people who grow, harvest, distribute, clean, stock, and sell the food I eat. I love that. I think that's excellent. Beautiful pictures. They seem very, um, personal. They seem like very personal pictures in here. Pictures of her family, of her wife, of her pets. All right, five things that are always in my refrigerator. Eggs, can agree. Corn tortillas, can also agree. Dijon mustard, yes. Kimchi, yes. And better than bouillon, yes. I can agree with this list. <laughs> I can vouch for this list. I also have all of these ingredients in my fridge at all times. So we're starting off real good. 
five tools I swear by. A handheld electric mixer. Now, if you read the dessert person review, I feel like this lady is just going after my heart. <laughs> Swing away jar opener. <gasps> I don't know what that is. Oh, I have a husband. <laughs> he opens my jars. A very small whisk. I don't have any tiny whisks. I, I should get one. I wanted to get one when Babish released his tiny whisks, but I didn't jump on it quickly enough. A toaster oven. Um, I don't have a toaster oven. And a digital scale. Absolutely. Can definitely um, vouch and agree with that. And five things I count on for good kitchen vibes. Ooh, I like this list already. Music. Absolutely. Cloth napkins. Absolutely. Old dishes. Oh, man. Yes. Even just, maybe not old dishes necessarily, but I love handmade dishes. I love ceramic dishes. One day, maybe I'll go through my whole um, like ceramic dishware uh, collection with you guys. My sister made a lot of them. She's an amazing potter based out of Tacoma in Washington, and she goes by Hansel Mondays. So you should check her out. She's a really gifted potter. Uh, silverware. I have a lot of like vintage silverware that I have found in antique stores and, and thrift stores and stuff like that. So definitely. And containers. Yeah. I mean, you got to have something to put the food in. Okay. And then we go into the recipes. Pretty simplistic in the food photography, which is totally fine. It looks like before most of the recipes, she includes a little blurb as to, you know, why she wanted to include them and if it has any family or personal you know, touch. This stuffed cabbage picture has a dirty knife that the cabbage has been cut open with and then a fork with some of it on it. It feels like you can just reach in and pick up the fork and eat it, which I love. It makes it, it brings it so much closer to home. These are some beautiful pictures. I love pictures of just ingredients. I don't know why. If you, if you take the time to like make a beautiful picture with just cabbage in this case, it just speaks to me in such a beautiful way. I, I much prefer those almost to finished product pictures. I don't know why. A thought on singing and why recipes matter. Aw, that looks like it's a little essay. I love that. Okay, so the, the first impression that I'm getting for this is that it's very personal. This feels like a cookbook that someone really, well, Julia, not someone, um, really poured her, herself into and like her heart and her life and her her stories and her family, which is really lovely. I mean, cookbooks can really tell a story and create connection with the people who are buying the cookbook and then using it. I mean, it's a really beautiful way to extend the story of your family and to carry on the traditions of your family. And that's really beautiful. And that seems to be something that she has really worked hard to do. And I really respect that. And I really appreciate that. She does have a few pictures where she shows you like the steps, which is really nice for visual learners. I bet she's using some of these dishes are like family heirloom dishes, which is beautiful. I love that. I'm really excited to go through this and make some of these recipes. It's kind of hard to judge. I mean, it's impossible to judge the cookbook itself if I haven't made any of the recipes, but so far, I really like the way that this cookbook is composed. I think that the recipes seem really well grounded and realistic and approachable. And it also seems like it's covering a lot of bases, but it's also tying it all into her and her family and her heritage and her history and her, her story. And I love that. I am so excited to read her essays, read her introduction and just go through all of the pictures because that is something that I just, I love doing. Sometimes in the bath, I will bring a cookbook in with me instead of a book and I will just go through it. Is that weird? That feels, I feel weird admitting that, <laughs> but I feel like it's a relatively normal thing. I love cookbooks, what can I say? Anyway, I'm gonna go because the sky is blue and what other reason do I need? Have a great day, bye.